it's shared uh, now. Thank you very much for confirming. So again, um, uh, without any further ado, I would like to thank the organizers one more time to the invitation to the Pediatrics Update Conference. Uh, and uh, uh, during my session, we will go on an overview for Freestyle Libre Flash Glucose um, System. Uh, a quick uh, overview on the features. How do we do the setup? How do we apply the sensor? And what information we get following scanning the sensor? We will talk about the performance and the accuracy of freestyle Libre flash glucose monitoring. And well, uh, by the end, also I will go over the most uh, uh, frequently asked questions and the common questions. But again, uh, any additional questions to those are very much uh, welcome either during the conference or even afterwards. So to start with, as a system overview for flash glucose monitoring, so freestyle uh, Libre flash glucose monitoring has been uh, un, uh, available for users across the globe since uh, now around uh, five uh, years. Uh, it is characterized by simplifying the process of uh, glucose monitoring. It's a sensor applied on the backside of the upper arm, and then it will last for up to 14 days following the activation. The patient will can scan uh, the sensor with the um, reader, and they will get uh, information, and we'll talk about what information they get following a scan. The device is uh, approved for use in all patients with diabetes aged uh, four years and above uh, following a one uh, warm-up period they can a one hour warm-up period they can uh, access this information the accuracy uh, versus the lab or the yellow springs instrument or the ysi for short is 9.2 percent for uh, the adult population and 9.7 percent for the pediatric uh, population and as I mentioned, uh, the uh, sensor stays up on the body for up to 14 days, and it is continuously reading every minute and will save every 15 minutes. And again, I will go into the uh, technicalities of, uh, um, uh, in a short while. And the sensor is water resistant, meaning the patient can continue to swim, exercise, um, and shower while uh, using the, uh, the system. So this is the overview of the uh, reader that is currently available for uh, patients in Egypt. Uh, it's um, a backlit color uh, touch screen. We have one uh, on and off a button, as well as we have a strip port. And this is uh, only for when the patients need to do any confirmation for a specific reason, or in case uh, during the warm-up period, and they would require uh, to use or monitor during the warm-up period of the sensor, then they have an option of the uh, strip. But again, um, uh, this is uh, much less relied uh, on. So the reader is compact. It's light uh, weight. One easy scan will allow us to access uh, the information which I will uh, discuss. It's a black lit touch screen, as I mentioned. It prov provides patient-friendly uh, um, uh, reports and graphs. It stores uh, information for uh, up to 90 days or around three months. And also the patient can use it to scan through their clothing for up to four centimeters um, uh, thickness. So even if they're wearing uh, wool uh, jackets or even heavier clothes during the winter for up to four centimeters, the sensor, we can still scan it. This is the uh, sensor kit. So within the sensor kit, we have the applicator, we have the sensor, and we have the uh, insert. Uh, and we'll also go through the process of how we assembly and how we apply uh, the sensor to the backside of the uh, upper arm. So uh, a quick setup for uh, the reader. Once the uh, patient receives their first kit, they will have to do a um, um, uh, setup for uh, the reader. Uh, from um, uh, First of all, we will need to check that it is also uh, fully charged. Generally, they come charged, but before the use, the uh, patient can plug it using the cord and the adapter available with the kit. And uh, a charge of three hours would help uh, um, sustain its use over uh, the sensor wear uh, period, depending on the frequency of scanning. So the first uh, thing we will do is to select the language. Um, uh, it is available in Arabic as well, if the, uh, if the patient prefers. And we also have English or French. Uh, we set uh, the current date. Afterwards, we press next, then we set the uh, time. Afterwards, we set the target uh, range. Again, this is based on the patient preference or based on the discussions with the healthcare professional on where they need to be sitting most of the time. Following the setup of the uh, target range, 
the uh, trend arrows a message will appear on the uh, on the screen uh, just giving an indication or a quick uh, description of the trend arrows that will appear with each and every scan and then we will uh, click on done and then it's ready to activate uh, the sensor so this is the display um, screen we will see uh, the check glucose uh, the review history as well as the countdown for uh, if, if there's a sensor active it will count down starting from the uh, first uh, day and we tell the patient when it's going to um, uh, uh, end. And if there is no active sensor, it will put no active sensor. Also, we have uh, um, uh, an icon so that the user can access the settings in case they want to uh, set information on the, um, on the device. So I will, I will uh, uh, walk through uh, the steps on the slides. How do we apply? And then I will uh, show it in a video. Uh, so for application of the sensor part, it's a simple step. However, there are certain minor things that we tell the patient to ensure that they have the best outcomes while going through uh, the process of uh, the application. So the only approved site for use of the sensor is the backside of the upper arm. Why is that? Because the evaluation and the FDA approval and the CE mark approval has been granted because of the data from the backside of the upper arm or the, those sites. So that's why we don't have any further uh, sites approved for use. We know that some patients like to apply it on the thigh or the upper ileus or the abdomen, but again, we don't have data uh, to show the performance on, on these sites, and that's why we encourage patient, patients to stick to the uh, backside of the upper arm. So following a choice of the, uh, of the site, they will need to prepare the site. So in the preparation of the site, also um, important steps is the uh, cleanliness of the site. So they need to wash the site with uh, soap and water, then they have to dry it. And then the next step uh, following the dryness is to wipe with an alcohol uh, wipe, an isopropyl alcohol wipe, the standard one. And then they, they let it to uh, dry. Then uh, while the site is drying, they can now assemble the um, sensor. So uh, when they will take out the uh, sensor and the applicator out of the box, and then on using a solid surface, and a solid surface only to make sure that uh, there is no um, uh, um, mess going on. Once they open the sensor, they unscrew the applicator as it's shown here on the diagram. And then on a solid surface, they will assemble both uh, parts. Now the applicator goes only one way into the sensor pack because there is one a hole or a line, a, gray, uh, a, gray, um, a dark gray line here that shows where they should communicate together. And then they will assemble and following this assembly, then it is ready to apply. Now, also a note, once the sensor and the applicator are, uh, are, are assembled, uh, if, you, if, uh, if we look at the applicator, we will see a needle. So this needle is um, a 28 gauge needle that is only required to pierce the surface. This is not what goes under the skin. It only pierces the surface so that the sensor, which is made of a medical grade uh, polymer to go under the skin, which is um, a thickness of three hairs and um, uh, not more than five millimeter, four to five millimeter in, in length under the skin. So uh, once this is ready, it will be stamped on the backside of the upper arm. We ask the patient to do a stamping and they have to make sure it's well firm on, on the skin, not from, uh, uh, from a, a distance. Now, sometimes uh, we tell the patient, don't look at the needle if they are needle phobic or they are worried, but the process is almost painless. So uh, they will not, uh, they will not uh, uh, feel the pain associated with that. So once the um, uh, stamping process is uh, done, then remove it and make sure that the sensor is secure in place. So now I will go quickly through a video to show again the process live. So here the, um, uh, again, an overview of the reader and the sensor. So here we ask the patient to wash the site with uh, soap and water. And then they will have to towel dry. And then with the alcohol wipe and make sure it's dry before we go to the next step. So here the patient will just make sure that the codes on both devices is the same. And then as I mentioned, they have to uh, assemble on a solid surface and with an alignment of the dark lines 
And then on the backside of the upper arm, they will stamp it uh, in a single step. And make sure, of course, the sensor is stuck to place. And of course, the device is, uh, is approved to be uh, used without any confirmatory um, uh, finger sticks unless the patients or the symptoms don't match, that's as per the label, and the patient can continue to decide or make decisions out of the readings uh, they uh, get. So that's why we say you can now scan without uh, um, a prick um, uh, or without the finger prick particularly. So when we start after the one hour warm up period, what information we can start accessing on uh, from the sensor. So following a scan, uh, we get three pieces of information. We get the current glucose reading, uh, which is shown here in example as 112 milligram per deciliter. Then we get the current trend arrow as well, the direction of how the glucose levels are changing. So uh, both the uh, current and the trend arrow are updated every minute. And then at the bottom, we get the uh, daily, or sorry, the eight hours graph, uh, which is the past uh, hours, eight, um, eight hours history on the, um, on the um, sensor, because the sensor will save every 15 minutes for the past eight hours. And also imp more importantly, that this eight hours uh, graph is drawn against the target range. So the patient can immediately see during the past eight hours how they were doing versus their target range when they look at the um, at the eight hours graph. So again, to furthermore, uh, to, vis uh, to visualize how the sensor saves the data and updates the data. So here's schematic presentation. So on the uh, uh, upper side of, of this slide, we see that the patient can scan as much as they want, okay? So they want to scan every second, they can do that. However, the reading will not be updated within the vicinity of 60 seconds, meaning one minute. So here, for example, the patient will scan at 105, they will get 72 um, uh, reading with a flat trend um, arrow. They will scan within the next 30 seconds. This is not going to change. It will change only within the next minute, once we uh, uh, flip to the next minute. Uh, and how the sensor saves the reading, it will save every 15 minutes to create this eight hours. So we will have 32 uh, data uh, points to make these, uh, these uh, uh, line every 15 minutes within the eight hours. So again, if the patient scans um, um, before the 15 minutes uh, frame, uh, this line at the bottom will not uh, change. In addition to the real time and in addition to the, to the eight hours history, it's very important as well uh, the, for the patient to understand the uh, trend arrow or the significance of the trend arrow. So the trend arrow is it's the rate of change, how fast or how slow or how stable the glucose levels are. And it's, this is very important for the patient so that they just don't look at the real uh, time reading. Like say, for example, if they have 72 milligram per deciliter, some will say, okay, we're in the good range or we're not going hypo. If the line uh, or if the trend arrow is in the flat format like that, it's the horizontal um, uh, uh, configuration. However, an action for a 90 or a 70 milligrams per deciliter will differ according to the direction of the trend arrow. So say if the trend arrow uh, is pointing downwards, either diagonally or vertically, it means that the glucose levels are going to uh, lower levels and thus we need to keep monitoring and we need to take action particularly if the glucose levels are going down very quickly. Similarly for the uh, uh, upward direction, either diagonal or vertical up. And again, this would could, uh, depending on the rate, because uh, each uh, trend arrow will say a rate. Um, uh, for example, the horizontal says the glucose is le changing less than one milligram per deciliter per minute, whereas uh, as we uh, go to the other configurations, uh, the diagonal uh, is changing between one to uh, two milligram per deciliter per minute, and for the, those vertical, either up or down, meaning it's changing more than two milligram per deciliter per minute. And with this, the patient can anticipate within the next 15 uh, to 30 minutes, particularly in the lower ranges where his glucose levels would be, and then they can take action to prevent further um, uh, deterioration in the glucose levels. 
So just to sum up in terms of the uh, information and decision-making while we are using Freestyle Libre. So while we are using the Freestyle uh, uh, Libre reader and scanning the sensor, this is the information we get. We get the real-time minute-to-minute glucose levels with the uh, trend arrow. We get the eight-hour history and we can compare it directly to the time uh, and target uh, as set on uh, the reader. The patient does not need to do any confirmatory finger sticks um, during the use of the device only as per the label if the symptoms don't match how the patient is feeling or expecting. So in this case, they will uh, uh, they can do a confirmatory finger stick. However, the algorithm and the accuracy has allowed our label uh, to support decision-making even when the patient is going into hypoglycemia rapidly or hyperglycemia rapidly. What information we get on the reader? We have seven retrospective uh, reports. We have the uh, logbook, which is uh, technically it's like a diary. When, once the patient does the scan, it will save uh, the reading with a trend arrow. We have the daily graph as well, which is the past uh, 24 hours for um, the patient once they access it. We have the uh, um, average glucose levels, which is over a period of 24 hours, split into blocks of six hours. And then uh, I can look immediately uh, through the report on how the averages are, are looking through the, um, uh, the, the blocks of uh, six hours. We also have the daily patterns, and here we have uh, the um, simplified uh, ablatory glucose profile uh, on, on, the, um, uh, on the reader, and as you compare it towards also the, um, uh, um, to the target uh, time and target or over the, uh, the period chosen. Now here, the daily graph or the daily pattern or the AGP does not appear until after five days because we need um, a minimum amount of data before this is generated. The other three uh, retrospective reports are the time in target. So based on the setting of uh, uh, then when we were set the reader, we set the time and target, and based on that, we are able to uh, assess how our patient is sitting in their targets, uh, above their targets and below uh, the target. Uh, the low glucose uh, uh, events also similarly uh, to the average within a period of 24 uh, hours, it's split into six hours blocks. And then we can see how many events on average the patient is having within these uh, period time. Of course, the hypo event is reported, recorded as uh, any uh, event below low 70 milligram per uh, deciliter for more than 15 minutes. And once the line, the daily uh, line, crosses uh, the 70 milligram threshold, the patient will see it's changing in red as well. So it is also a visual cue for the patient to see that they are going below uh, the 70. And finally, and more importantly, to reflect the engagement of the patient is the sensor usage. So it will give an average of how many scans they do per day and how much data has been captured uh, from the sensor, because this is also important to, uh, to, uh, to make sure that we have enough data uh, for reliance on uh, information given from the, um, from the uh, device or from the sensor. In terms of accuracy, I will quickly go over this information because also this is important for us to know uh, what information is, um, uh, how accurate is the device while we are using it with our patients. So um, the accuracy of the Freestyle Libre has been assessed in pediatric and in um, uh, um, adult uh, population as well as in, in pregnant females. However, um, if in pregnant females, we do have the approval for use. Uh, however, we'll still for the new algorithm or for the new accuracy, we're still waiting for the uh, final data. However, it is approved for use in pregnant females. Here, uh, for um, uh, the uh, accuracy to start with, uh, we have evaluated the, uh, um, the sensor in pediatric and in adult population. To start with, uh, uh, from the adult population, uh, with the numerical accuracy. What do we mean by the numerical accuracy? It's something called MARD, or mean absolute relative um, difference. Uh, this is um, just um, uh, the average of or average of difference between or accordance, that's in another words, between the um, a, a lab and between the sensor based on a large number of data points. And we call it, this is the numerical um, accuracy. So for the adults, uh, based on data from 146 uh, subjects, 18 years and above, the majority were uh, type 1. 
and all of them are on uh, either an MDI therapy or on uh, on pump uh, therapy. Uh, the overall mark in the uh, adult population was 9.2%, uh, and uh, a distribution or the agreement within the 20 uh, milligram per deciliter or 20% uh, uh, within the lab is 93.2%. We also see that they score high agreement in the lower uh, glucose uh, levels below 70 milligram per deciliter. We have a, a, an agreement of 98.4% uh, with the lab and with the even at the, at the lower or more critical levels of 40 to 50, we have 96.3% agreement. In terms of the clinical accuracy, it is associated uh, or assessed by something we call the consensus error grid, which is a regression plot. It's a plot of the reference versus the sensor. And then based on um, uh, the uh, a clinical uh, recommendation consensus, the graph has been split into five regions, A, B, C, D, and E. And we want, uh, in order for the device to show that it is uh, accurate and will not alter clinical decision making, we need the readings to fall within A and B, almost 99%, if I want to say, of the ISO standard for the BGMs. And because we don't have still industry standard for the uh, um, uh, sensor-based technology, so we reflect it from the BGM standard. So here, we have from the adult uh, uh, data, uh, we have 99.9% .9 of the data falling within zones A, which is the ac uh, clinically accurate and clinically acceptable, A and uh, B. And this is based on more than 17,000 per data points uh, collected during the uh, accuracy study. Also, the stability over the 14 days uh, of wear, we see the numerical accuracy expressed as marred over the uh, uh, beginning from 1 to 3, then from 3 to 7, then from 7 uh, to 11, and then from 11 to uh, uh, 15 uh, days of wear, we see that the, the uh, numerical accuracy is stable and averages at below 10% for uh, uh, the sensor for uh, adult um, accuracy and again, adult uh, um, population. And that is because of the uh, fact that the device or the sensor is factory calibrated. So we have eliminated the errors because of the finger stick calibration uh, uh, of the device, as well as we use a proprietary technology called the wired enzyme technology that ensures that the enzyme sitting on the sensor filament is stable and is not affected by its environment uh, or there is no uh, deflect in the um, readings um, over, the, uh, over the time of work. Similarly, in the pediatric population, uh, we were able to um, uh, produce similar results uh, based on data from 129 subjects aged 4 to 17. Uh, also, they were uh, two sensors on the right and the left, and we have compared the uh, information or the results uh, and paired them with uh, the lab results to ensure that or to see how the performance is happening. Again, the, for this pediatric population, majority type 1, more than 98% percent were type 1s, and they were all on pump or MDI um, therapy. So for the numerical accuracy, the MARD was 9.7 percent, and the agreement within the plus minus 20 uh, percent or 20 milligram per deciliter was 92.1 uh, percent. Similarly, the agreement in the uh, lower ranges with the uh, lab uh, or YSI for the below 70 totaled of 98.8 percent, and for the uh, lower levels of 40 to 50 milligram per deciliter was 90 96.8%. Uh, and we had um, uh, as well on the CEG, uh, we had around 6,500 um, uh, coupled data. And here we see 100% uh, agreement between um, uh, the falling of zones A and B as compared to the lab. So here we had all the results falling in the clinically accurate and the clinically acceptable zones on the consensus error grid. Similarly, for the performance over the 14 days uh, during either early wear from day one to three, then from uh, day from four to uh, um, seven, then from seven to 10, then from 10 to uh, 14, we see that the MARD is also um, stable over uh, that wear uh, period. Again, so for similar reasons, because uh, we are using wired enzyme technology and we have eliminated patient inflicted errors due to uh, a calibration process. So this is to summarize before I go into the frequently asked 
questions. So Freestyle Libre Flash Glucose Monitoring Data provides actionable insights. Now, with the ease of application and with the ease of access to this information, we're able to um, uh, see uh, um, and guide uh, the patients. And the patients can independently as well now uh, manage their um, diabetes once they understand the information uh, provided. Uh, there is no finger stick calibration required and no finger stick confirmation unless the symptoms uh, don't match how the patient is feeling or expecting. The sensor will automatically measure, capture, and store uh, the glucose uh, data. Uh, the accuracy is um, of highest standards or unsurpassed accuracy over the 14 days. And we have wealth of uh, data as well showing that uh, um, the use of freestyle libre has been associated with improved uh, glycemic outcomes, whether in a clinical trial setting or in observational real world uh, trial settings. And maybe in another opportunity, uh, we can uh, discuss uh, those. Um, so I will go now into the uh, frequently asked questions. Again, any questions outside of those uh, FAQs are very much uh, welcome. And I will also uh, check with the with um, uh, the doctor chairperson if uh, the time allows to go over these FAQs. Thank you very much, Dr. Manel, for your informative presentation. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Samah Tawki for inviting me, a kind invitation to share in his very successful and great conference as usual. And the selection of the topics is a very high selection of the topics and very important uh, topics. Uh, I want to ask you, Dr. Manel, about uh, the age for approval of uh, freestyle library is four mm -hmm. years. Uh, is there any studies to uh, for approval uh, below this age? So yes, thank you very much, Doctor, for your question. So the evaluation has been done in patients aged four years and above. And currently, as our diabetes care, we don't have data below that uh, age. Uh, and that's why we say it's an off-label uh, use. So it's um, the decision is based uh, on the healthcare professionals at, uh, at his or her discretion. But as a company, we don't have data and we don't have it on our label uh, yet. Uh, okay, about, about uh, the sensor and change of the sensor every, I think this is, this is a very common question, every 15 days and the cost, uh, some patients starts to use more than 15 days up to one month and says that uh, the results are good results. Uh, what is your opinion? So um, actually, this is um, somewhat as a surprise if they are able to activate the sensor up to uh, one month. Uh, sensor is designed to stay for up to 14 days it will automatically shut off. Now we know that there are certain attempts, like they use some uh, applications or they use some devices, like Taulu Umr sensor to extend it more than uh, 14 days. But again, uh, uh, this is technically not very much possible. And if even if it's done, we cannot um, uh, guarantee the accuracy because again, this system is, uh, is factory calibrated and evaluated to work for up to 14 days on the body. Any further extension has not been evaluated, so we cannot guarantee that the device is, uh, is uh, safe and accurate for the patient to continue to use it. Uh, it automatically stops. It automatically stops. Yeah. It's important to give this message to the patients because they started uh, to share this uh, opinion in uh, the media. So I want all doctors but to, uh, to, yeah, to, to tell the patients that's only 14 days for uh, the mm -hmm. century. Uh, Thank you very much. About the delay sometimes between uh, freestyle library uh, me uh, measurements and uh, capillary blood glucose, uh, sometimes reach up to 14 milligrams. Uh, what is the opinion? Uh, we have to uh, uh, check with the finger back uh, at that time to uh, refer to the company. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the situation when the patient are seeing this discrepancy. Now, uh, with the new algorithm, and now previously we used to ask the patient for the older, argo uh, older algorithm that in case the uh, glucose levels are changing uh, very quickly or rapidly, we will ask them to do a finger stick arm confirmation. However, um, uh, there is, um, in, even in the older uh, algorithm, the lag time, which is the difference between the blood glucose and the uh, interstitial fluid was an average of 4.5 uh, minutes, but with a standard deviation of four minutes. So there was a quite uh, um, a lag time. With the newer algorithm, uh, the lag time has been also reduced and we've also improved the accuracy so that the patient will only need to do confirmation uh, during uh, or 
or and when the symptoms don't match or they don't uh, know how to feel. Now, the discrepancy um, uh, sometimes is there and it depends on the situation when the patients are uh, doing this uh, um, uh, this testing. So are they doing it, uh, for example, after um, 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 insulin dose? Are they doing it after exercise? Do they consider the uh, trend arrow? Because sometimes if there is, um, uh, um, you know, even the, there are differences between uh, fingers. If we do the finger stick, and this previously, when, when patients used to come to us, they say, I use the same device and every finger will give me a different reading. So it depends on, um, so of course, there would be a physiological difference. And it has to be taken into context, the situation. The patient needs to look at the trend um, arrow uh, in order to, uh, to uh, evaluate why there is difference. Also, um, are the patients doing the blood glucose testing, the finger stick? They're doing it accurately and properly. Um, and um, uh, so it's, it's uh, actually this discrepancy, it depends on the situation. However, if the patient sees major discrepancies that could affect the uh, um, decision-making, then they will have to report that to customer uh, service, provided that um, the time of uh, the comparison is within 10 minutes. We tell the patients that even when you call the customer service, make sure that the, both tests are done at the same time. Some patients come, they do the scan, they do the finger stick, and sometimes it's up to two hours or one hour's difference. So, um, um, so we need to take it into context. Discrepancy is there, but um, it is not when it shouldn't be um, uh, with this difference. I hope this clarifies the, the, um, the answer. Thank you, Dr. Manel. Uh, okay, any questions from... Uh... Dr. Manel, uh, thank you very much. Excellent presentation. زي ما تعودنا دائما. بس أنا عايز أقول لحضرتك رسالة جات لي من أم الأمهات بتقولي free style كتير بيديني error. بيطلب مني أنتظر 10 minutes. والمدة ساعات بتوصل تلت ساعة. أوقات بيكون في دم فتحة السنسور. سؤال أفضل نوع سنون لأقلام الأقلام إيه والفرق بين السنسور في مصر والسنسور اللي في الخليج بس إن كان في مصر قبل تركيب بتكون بلاستيك وكان يلا في السنسور الخليج بيكون معدن واللزق حوالين السنسور ضعيف نوعا ما أوكي أوكي بعض الأنسولين طبعا يعني أنا عايز أعلق قبل حالك ما تجاوب أنا طبعا أنا عارف كويس قوي إن اللي بيحصل تشينج ذا سنسور وإيميديتلي في الحقيقة. لكن دي قصة أخرى ده معناه الكاستمر سيرفيس شغال كويس والسيرفيس ما بعد البيع شغال كويس لكن هو سؤال ليه ده بيحصل مع بعض الأمهات مش كلهم بس في نسبة النسبة دي نسبة يعني لازم يعني نبقى تارجتنج اتفضلي حضرتك شكرا دكتور سامح بس تعقيما على حضرتك اللي هو السنسور الارر لما بيعطي ارر يعني معناتها يعني حتى 10 minutes او 20 minutes معناتها السنسور مش قادر يقرا معناتها هو في احتماليه انه يكون اتحرك من مكانه Uh, that's why they ask to, uh, uh, فهو كسيفتي عشان ما يعطي ارونس uh, ايرورز انه يتحرك من مكانه او عمل لوسننج السنسور ما بقى حيقرا فاذا هو جربت الـ الـ الام انها تضل تعمل سكاننج ات ويل جيف هير ايرور مسج ذاتس واي ات ويل نيد ديبندنج اون ذا كيس او وقت استخدام السنسور انه ينعمل له ريبليسمنت او وي كونتاكت كاستمر يعني سيرفيس ترابل شوتنج السنسور لما يبطل يعني يتوقف عن القراءه بيكون صار في ايرور لحتى نحن نمنع انه يصير في اي ايرونس ديسيجنز بيزد على الايرور يعني مثلا اذا السنسور عمل لوسننج ممكن في بعض الحالات نحن لقينا انه بيقرا لور ذان اكسبكتد فهو عشان نحن ما ندخل بهيدا الايرور السنسور بيطفي فبالتالي نضطر انه نحن نعمل ريبليسمنت للسنسور فهي ممكن يكون واحد من الاكسبلينيشنز واي ذا ذا سنسور از جيفينج ايرور اكيد هو الايرور بيكون في كود لما بيتصل المريض على الكول سنتر او مثلا بنقول له ابعث لنا الريدر او ابعث لنا السنسور الكاستمر سيرفيس بيقدر انه يدخل على الهيستوري ويقدر يطلع الكود ايرور بالضبط انه شو صاير بحاله هاي السنسور انا هيدي يعني يعني ذس از My, uh, my uh, perspective on it. Akid, uh, uh, we hope you know, not all patients see it, but it is again something that we would expect to see is a can sire had in the Akhda. Shukran Gazin, Dr. Manel, can be bardo, yani, Sharait, but it had to fill the hairs, when it's got on Baramas, who tamil had been healing it, then, but I'm a blood glucose, who tamil ketones. 
available عندنا؟ ال actually doctor thank you very much for your question the reader نفسه يعني المريض اللي عم يستخدمه في له الstrip port بيقدر يستخدم الstrips ال optimum new وال strips الكيتون كمان متوفرة بس هذه يعني أنا بدي أرجع على زميلتي ولاء بمصر لحتى نشوف إذا هدول still available بس هو still the reader بيقدر يقرأ blood ويقدر بالstrip نفس ال optimum new والكيتون strips أنا عارف إن هو بيقرأ بس بتكلم إن هي الشرايط من برا مصر وتحطها في الجهاز فلو افيلبل عند تغيير جامد جدا ان احنا بنشوف الكيتون زي نشوف في اسيد كيتون كيتوز ولا فيش كيتوز لا هو الجهاز نفسه بيقرا فما فيش مشكله بس مش افيلبل عندنا وبنجيبها من بره فامتى اوكي افيلبل عندنا السؤال هيدا السؤال اجين انا ديفير لزميلتي ولا لانه هذا كوميرشال يعني يعني الكوميرشال اورجنايزيشن او الماركتنج بيقدروا يساعدونا انه نشوف كيف فينا نعملها افيلبل بمصر. طب الجيل الجديد بقى من فري ستايل هينزل امتى؟ يعني ان شاء الله المانجمنت هناك فطبعا محتاجين نعرف البلان لا ان شاء الله نحن طبعا اخذنا وقت وكان يعني مجهود يعني انا اي هاف تو يعني اعطي كريدت لابوت يعني مكتبنا الاقليمي نحن كثير عملنا افورتس حتى ندخل فري ستايل ليبري على مصر والحمد لله يعني ذس از ذا فيرست ستيب وعارفين نحن تاخرنا لكن الحمد لله نحن خلص اوريدي ذير ان شاء الله البلان انه نحن وي ويل جو تو ذا نيكست جينيريشن بس ات ويل تيك تايم اي كانت ادفايز وين بس ان شاء الله is in, in, in the plan. But there plans for sure. Any questions? Uh, بس دكتور لو سمحتي انا كان في دكتور سامح سال سؤال على الدفرنس بين السنسور وبين بالخليج وبمصر. حاليا نحن الاكيرسي للديفايس الجهاز نفسه اكروس ذا بلانت يعني السنسور بيستخدم بيستخدم نفس الالجوريثم اكروس ذا بلانت اذا كان ليبري 1 ليبري 2 ولا ليبري 3 ما في اي فروقات ب هاو ذا سنسور از بينج مانيفاكتشرد الاكيوريسي اتس ذا سيم يعني نحن وحدنا البرفورمنس ممكن التكنيكال سبيسيفيكيشنز يعني جهاز بيجي مثلا مع الارم بدون الارم ريل تايم اللي هي 1 2 اند 3 بس ان تيرمز اوف ذا اكيوريسي ات از ذا سيم ف يعني يطمن المريض انه نحن مش uh, ما في عندنا اي uh, برودكتس بتروح لمكان ما بتروح لمكان اخر يعني. السؤال الاول بيقول انه في فيتامينز او دراجز بتاثر على القرايه؟ فيتامينز او دراجز بتاثر على القرايه. الدراجز بالمبدا نحن ما في عندنا اي دراج تو تو هايلايت اون ذا اون ذا انترفيرنسز namely something common like the acetaminophen or the or the aspirin, ما في أي interferences عليهم. The vitamins, the very high dose, اللي هي above the the daily dose, لا the vitamin C could affect the readings. But again, this is at very highly dose. ممكن تعطي false lower glucose levels. But it is an in مش therapeutic يعني مش the daily doses اللي هي tablets اللي بتتخذ on daily doses. Mike, I ask about the effect of water on the sensor and put the half an hour. Warm water can affect Uh, longer durations than half hour, some must in swimming pool, some children. Uh, children. So uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, for the uh, hot water uh, on the sensor, it does not affect. Lano, our an electric, uh, uh, electric parts or chips are are encapsulated, secured. The sensor is sitting under the skin. ف, uh, and the sensor also, يعني, this is if uh, one of the features, you know, it is able to, um, it, uh, يعني, because it operates at body temperature, it's measuring body temperature, so it is not affected by the external uh, uh, temperature. So uh, it will not cause any uh, effect, the hot water or hot showers. Uh, 
بالنسبة للسويمينج نحن بنقول للبيشنت إنه do not immerse uh, at deeper than one meter for more than 30 minutes. هلا so, in the process of uh, swimming the patient ما حد ضل إيده تحت ال ال ماي more than one meter uh, 30 minutes generally if they are just swimming in the pool. However, إذا بدي أعمل scuba diving لا it would uh, it would uh, not be recommended لأنه more than 30 minutes for deeper than one uh, meter. Uh, the issue هون إنه يعني more immersion for that uh, more than that uh, time could affect the communication or the NFC communication between the sensor and the reader. That's why we would uh, that there should be this recommendation on the duration and the depth. Thank you. Any further questions? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Manel, and the great okay. of course in diabetes technology. For glucose monitoring, self monitoring of glucose from urine strips to meters and continuous glucose monitoring, uh, intermittent flash monitoring, flash monitoring uh, freestyle delivery. And uh, we are waiting for the second generation of freestyle delivery with alarms, with they can connect to smartphones. Uh, but uh, thank you very 